In this video, we'll create an AI agent in Azure AI Foundry. We're starting in the Azure AI Foundry portal, where I'll create a new project now. There's this new concept of an Azure AI Foundry resource. This is because Azure AI Foundry is constantly evolving and before there was this model related to having an AI hub and then having an AI project within those hubs and Microsoft has decided to simplify it by just having an AI Foundry resource which then can have your project in it. I'll create a new Azure AI Foundry resource now. Let's call it AIS for Azure Innovation Station. AI Agent Demo. It'll create an Azure AI Foundry resource, which will just say resource in the end. I'll keep my subscription. I'll create a new resource group using the same name, keeping resource group at the front. And I'll create this in East US. We'll wait a few minutes for this to get created, and then we'll jump into the AI Agents Playground. My resource is done being created. Now let's jump into the Azure AI Foundry Agents Playground. So coming up to Playground, I can click Playgrounds, see all the existing playgrounds that exist, and I can go to Agents Playground. Because I currently have no agents, I need to deploy an AI model that will be the brains for my AI agent. Let's choose one now. I'm gonna choose GPT-40 Mini because I know it's powerful and not that expensive. I'll continue through the deployment options. Everything looks good. Now that my model has deployed, let's take a look at the agent's playground. I can see there's the option to create a new agent. I can view the code when I'm finally ready to embed my agent into some sort of application. I can delete my agent. There's a new trigger feature allowing us to start our AI agents, not just from a chat, but programmatically from something like a logic app. And then coming down, I have my playground box where I can ask something like, what can you do? And with no system message, this should be a pretty generic assistant response. Now this conversation I've just started is called a thread and I can come to my thread logs to see everything that's happening within these thread conversations. I can see the metadata that's involved with this run. I can see any evaluations that occur. I can see the back and forth. I can even see the tokens that are used and how long it took. If I wanted to create a new thread and start this over, just click new thread. This creates a clean slate. If you wanna go back to an old thread, you can go to agents, go to my threads and see your existing threads. Going back to my agents, I'll select this agent and I'll go back to the playground. In the setup page, I have my agent ID. I have the name for my agent that I choose. I have the deployment for the AI model that is giving the brains and function to my AI agent. I have my instructions or my system message that I want to give to my agent to customize it. I could create a description for myself on how my agent is supposed to function and what does it do so that me or anyone in my organization knows what it's doing and what it's for. I could give it knowledge so it can perform RAG, which is called Retrieval Augmented Generation, so that it has access to data that I give it to make it more knowledgeable without having to retrain the model. And I could have it perform actions. This is something that makes an agent an agent and not just a chatbot is that it can take actions on your behalf that you specify. For multi-agent scenarios, I could also have connected agents, which connected agents then operate as a tool for a main agent in a multi-agent scenario within Azure AI Foundry. I have my model settings and an option to enable voice agents. Now let's create an agent. I forget about birthdays sometimes, so I wanna create an agent that will send an email to my friends wishing them happy birthday on my behalf. All I wanna to have to do is tell the agent, hey, send a happy birthday email to so-and-so and have it do all the rest of the work for me with a nice, fun, sweet email and wishing them happy birthday without me having to go and send them an email myself. So let's create an agent that does that. We'll call it happy birthday email agent. You are a happy birthday email agent. 
you send emails on my behalf to wish others happy birthday. You only send emails about birthdays. Now I can ask it, what do you do? And it should tell me that it's a happy birthday agent that sends happy birthday emails. Great. So I can ask it to send an email for me, but right now it has no way of actually being able to do that. And this is where actions come in. So I'll add an action and I have a bunch of different options, code interpreter for looking at different code options, uh, open API 3.0 if I want to add a specific API, a custom API of my own, uh, Azure Logic Apps, which is what we're gonna use. And you can also implement your own custom function or an Azure function. It's just, you can't do that from the Azure AI Foundry portal. You'd have to do that through the code and there's documentation examples for that. So I'll select Azure Logic Apps. And I already have a Logic App that will send an email from Outlook on my behalf. But the way I created this workflow file was just using this Microsoft authored send email using Outlook, which you can use as well. So I'll select my existing Logic App. The tool name already exists to send an email from Outlook. Tools are what agents see underneath the hood to understand what they're taking actions on. I want to give a description to the tool so that the AI agent knows when this tool should get triggered. Trigger this tool when a birthday email needs to be sent. And I'll create it. Now I can see this action and I can go ahead and change any of the options if I want by clicking manage. If I want to change the name, if I want to change the description, Sometimes you need to play around with the description on how to invoke your tool and also the instructions for your agent. This is because AI agents are always going to use this text to understand your intent to try to best figure out exactly what it should do. So in order for it to trigger an action, it needs to have enough information to understand when it should and should not do that. It takes some time to play around with this, but let's see if we can get it to work. I want to send a birthday email to my friend Mason Stark. His email is Mason Stark 211 at Outlook.com. This is just a dummy email that I have set up for testing purposes. I spelled friend wrong, but the AI model understood what I was trying to say, so it's okay. And I see it says I've sent a birthday email to Mason Stark. So let's see if it did. Now I can view the run info and see the thread and see the run that occurred. I asked it to send an email on my behalf. It triggered a tool. The tool was the logic app that sends the emails. And I can see here the information that was sent to the Logic App. At the end, I can see the message that was created that is the output for me. In another page, I can pull this up, which is my dummy email, and I can see my happy birthday email that was sent. Now this is great, but I don't always wanna to have to put in the email every time I ask my agent to send a happy birthday on my behalf. So let's add some knowledge. I can go over to add, knowledge. You can add knowledge from all kinds of sources. You can upload files, use indexing with AI search, Microsoft Fabric, SharePoint, or in preview. You can do grounding with Bring Search so that the AI agent will look things up online. And there's other options from TripAdvisor and Morningstar as well. I'll click upload files, where I'll create a new vector store. I'll leave the default name, and for reference, the file that I'm going to upload is this super simple context.txt file that has three names with three emails. This should be enough for my AI agent to understand someone's name and their associated email so that they can send an email on my behalf without me having to give them the email every time. I've added my file and now I'm uploading it. I can now see my vector store created 
and I have the one file in it. I can click manage if I want to upload more files or if I want to remove or delete the vector store. Let's now help the agent know when to check this information. If an email is not given, you always check your knowledge base. And I don't know how to spell. All right, now let's try this. Please send a birthday email to my friend Mason. It's his 25th birthday today. Tell him he is awesome. Now my agent will look to see if there's references to a Mason in its knowledge base and hopefully send the email on my behalf. Cool, it says it sent the birthday email to Mason, wishing him a happy 25th birthday. I can check the run info and see the tool calls that occurred. I can see that an email was sent to the same person. And I can see here in my dummy email to Mason, he was wished his 25th happy birthday. And the agent also followed my instructions to tell him that he's awesome. One note here that I see is at the end here, I just see a blank for your name. Let's go ahead and fix that because the AI agent doesn't know how to sign the emails. Sign emails with the name Frankie. Now we wanna send another email and let's try sending it to someone else in that knowledge base. Let's say, send an email to my friend Jacob. It's his 35th birthday and tell him he is cool. And remember, I never put the email in anywhere in this thread, so it has to check the knowledge base. So I can see the tool calls that occur here, the logic app that sends the email, the file search, which checks my knowledge base to find the email for Jacob, and message creation with the output back to me. You can also see how many tokens this took up. I can check this other dummy email and I can see a birthday message to Jacob where my agent follows my instructions to tell him he's cool for his 35th birthday and signs the name as Frankie, as I instructed. We just scratched the surface on what can be done with agents in Azure AI Foundry. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I reply to every comment, I'm happy to help, and your feedback helps me understand how I can improve and what content I should be making. If this video was helpful for you, please like the video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.